To this day, Gigantopithecus is believed to be the heaviest ape to ever walk the earth. They could reach a height of nearly three meters and may have weighed around 200 to 300 kilograms or roughly 440 to 660 pounds. Yet its fossil record remains a mystery consisting of just a few jaws and thousands of teeth. For such a dominant species, its disappearance is a puzzle. How did this colossal ape vanish from history, leaving behind only a trail of questions and a legacy of myth? The secrets to its rise and fall are hidden within the very teeth that fueled its immense frame. Reconstructing such a creature is not straightforward when the evidence is so fragmentary. Scientists are working from just four lower jaws and nearly 2,000 isolated teeth. No limbs, no spine, no skull beyond the mandible. Every proposal about its posture proportions or movement stems from this narrow foundation, which is why the very image of Gigantopithecus has always been debated. The scarcity of remains meant early reconstructions drifted into speculation. Some experts once argued it was essentially a gigantic version of a gorilla moving slowly on all fours. Others suggested it held a more upright stance, perhaps closer to what you see in humans. What we now know, thanks to protein studies from its dental enamel, is that Gigantopithecus was a pongine most closely allied to orangutans. This doesn't solve the puzzle of its body shape, but does root the comparison in a clearer family tree. Even so, without shoulders, hips or limbs to examine any image you see in an article or museum mural is still an informed sketch overlaid on a very incomplete record. The key question many have wanted to answer is scale. Just how massive was this ape earlier work scaled up from living orangutans comparing tooth area to body mass? More recent assessments have refined that view and while uncertainties remain, the best supported estimates suggest somewhere in the range of 200 to 300 kilograms, roughly 440 to 660 pounds. Because no postcranial bones have ever been found, these numbers rest entirely on extrapolation from its teeth and from close relatives. Researchers are careful to emphasize that margin of error. It may have been heavier or lighter, but within whatever figure you choose, it still stands as the largest primate known to science. The teeth themselves are striking enough to convey scale. Hold a human molar on the tip of your thumb and it seems ordinary small and neat. Place it beside a Gigantopithecus molar R, broad, thick, crowned and rugged, and the difference is jarring. One of these massive teeth could nearly fill the palm of your hand. Their heavy enamel and extensive chewing surfaces reveal an animal designed to grind down dense fibrous plant foods in great volume. The roots anchoring those teeth into the jaw were equally oversized, showing how much daily force they had to resist. From these jaws, scientists can infer a head that was wide and deep with bone, thick enough to survive immense bite pressures. Beyond that jawline though, the picture breaks apart into guesswork. Some reconstructions portray a forest ape with long arms that could still climb. Others frame it as a bulky ground dweller pressing through thick undergrowth. What is consistent is the recognition that the limited evidence, the handful of jaws and the thousands of teeth forces researchers to build models on chains of inference rather than direct observation. This constant uncertainty is part of what makes Gigantopithecus compelling. Its portrait is always unfinished reshaped whenever new techniques or comparisons appear. Every discovery of a tooth or jaw fragment adds one more piece to a puzzle that has very few edges. And while appearance and posture remain unclear, the teeth themselves hold more than clues about size. Within their structure are wear patterns, enamel textures and elemental traces that record the meals this giant consumed. Those microscopic records are the trail that allows researchers to move beyond sheer bulk and into the daily life of a vanished herbivore, what it ate, how it survived and why its diet mattered so much for its fate. How can researchers uncover the feeding habits of a long extinct ape when only teeth remain? The answer lies in the microscopic records sealed into enamel. Viewed under magnification pits, scratches and ridges across Gigantopithecus molars provide direct clues about what passed through its mouth. The molars themselves were broad and flat, not designed for slicing meat, but built for heavy grinding. Their thick enamel and reinforced jaws signaled an animal adapted to process fibrous vegetation, including bamboo seeds and tough plant tissues with remarkable force. 
Yet the real issue is not whether Gigantopithecus could chew hard foods. It clearly could, but how restricted its diet appears to have been. The evidence suggests G. Blackie was a specialist with less dietary flexibility than its relative Pongo the orangutan lineage, rather than an animal that chose bamboo and fruit. For a body mass estimated at several hundred kilograms, survival required dependable caloric intake across all seasons. Bamboo, shoots, fruits, and certain seeds may have offered bursts of nutrition, but they were not always available year round. Fossil teeth record this problem directly. Microware surfaces vary between textures linked to softer fruit and rougher woody fallback foods, showing Gigantopithecus repeatedly turned to lower quality resources when preferred ones ran short. Dental microware texture analysis shows G. Blackie used fibrous fallback foods more often than its contemporary Pongo Weidenreichi, while trace element banding and isotopic data indicate reduced dietary diversity and signs of chronic stress as the species approached extinction. Carbon and oxygen isotope values reveal a strong tether to closed humid forest ecosystems where rainfall supported bamboo and fruit trees. This was not an ape ranging widely across savannas or exploiting diverse food webs, but one anchored to particular forest patches. Oxygen signals in particular connect Gigantopithecus tightly to moist tropical conditions, reinforcing how little ecological flexibility it possessed compared to other primates. To see the contrast, you only need to compare these signatures with orangutans of the same era. Orangutans also hunted for seasonal fruit, yet their teeth show more adjustment to shortage conditions. Even today, orangutans will rely on bark leaves or insects when fruiting phases end. Gigantopithecus left fewer signs of such adaptability. Instead, the isotopes and microware confirm a narrow cycle fruit during abundance bamboo as a secondary source and woody material in lean times. For an organism of its bulk, each fallback period represented mounting physiological stress. Large primates cannot simply cut their energy needs in half. Their body mass demands a consistent flood of calories, whether available or not. Closer to its extinction window, chemical patterns in tooth growth bands become blurred and inconsistent. Normally, stable feeding leaves clear elemental rhythms, but in the latest material, these fade into irregular profiles. This has been read as an indication of food instability and malnutrition seasons of abundance no longer balancing out lean periods. Those dental signals of stress appear in material dated close to the extinction window 295 to 215,000 years ago, suggesting the species was already strained before it disappeared. Imagine a heavy built ape reduced to gnawing on bark and lignified stalks for months, burning through energy faster than caloric intake could replace. The same physical traits that once secured dominance now locked it into a precarious dependence on resources that were no longer reliable. The conclusion is difficult to avoid. Gigantopithecus survived not by versatility, but by attachment to a particular feeding strategy. That strategy bound it tightly to forests rich in bamboo and fruiting trees. When those systems shifted, the very size that once defined it became a liability. Enamel scratches, isotopic ratios, and fading chemical signals collectively show a population under growing stress with less margin for survival each generation. How did regional forests shift so dramatically? The cave records hold the answer. For more than two million years, Gigantopithecus thrived in the rainforests of Southeast Asia, its size giving the impression of permanence. Generation after generation survived through shifting rivers and eroding hills, so long as the dense, humid canopy held steady. Those evergreen forests supplied fruiting trees, while bamboo clumped in shaded understories. As long as that dependable system remained, the giant ape had what it required. The problem came later in the Middle Pleistocene, when the climate system introduced new patterns of instability. It wasn't simply that forests shrank, it was the variability in forest composition and seasonality that introduced a trap for an animal so specialized. Environmental variability in the region increased in a stepwise way from about 1.1 to 0.35 million years ago, with a transitional phase between roughly 700 to 295,000 years ago, and a tightly dated regional extinction window for Gigantopithecus around 295 to 215,000 years ago. This rhythm of glacial and interglacial shifts broke up what had once been broad belts of evergreen forest. As conditions alternated, rainfall patterns and temperature swings remade plant communities not once, but repeatedly. For a species tethered to closed moist habitats, each environmental pulse imposed new pressures. 
the changes are preserved in fine-grained evidence. Pollen studies show declining arboreal cover alongside a rising signal of grasses and ferns, while simultaneous increases in charcoal indicate more frequent disturbance and fire. Together, these markers suggest a transition from evergreen forest interiors to more open patchwork woodlands exposed to seasonality. That image is not of forests vanishing overnight, but of steady conversion patches of canopy giving way to mosaics of clearing and regrowth. The outcome left Gigantopithecus with far fewer secure feeding grounds. These altered forests stripped resources in a gradual squeeze. Less evergreen cover meant reduced fruit availability during certain months. Fire disturbance and expanding grasses cut back bamboo, the very fallback Gigantopithecus leaned on when fruit ran low. Each swing toward openness broke up once continuous habitat, fragmenting the range where it could forage. While smaller and more flexible primates could adjust their diet or alter their movements, Gigantopithecus carried too much bulk and needed too constant a food supply. Its gigantic body, which once deterred rivals, became a liability in fluctuating ecosystems. Radiometric dating ties the youngest fossils to approximately 295 to 215,000 years ago. The finds in places like Shuangtan Cave in southern China may represent the last refuges patches of habitat that briefly supported declining populations. Even within these havens, pollen and charcoal indicate increasingly open conditions and receding evergreen canopies. By this point, the tightening cycle of variability had erased the stable, resource-rich forests that could sustain an animal of such size. Importantly, current evidence finds no clear role for archaic hominins in this event. Homo erectus and other human ancestors were present in the region, but no data link them to the decline of Gigantopithecus. The extinction signal aligns instead with climate-driven ecological change, vegetation composition, fire regimes and rainfall patterns, rather than hunting or direct conflict. The contrast with other species illustrates the point. Orangutans endured in the same fluctuating environments by adjusting their diet and exploiting patchy resources while early humans expanded across varied terrain by shifting their strategy. Gigantopithecus, in contrast, hit an ecological ceiling. It lacked the flexibility to move beyond the food webs it knew. When those vanished or changed, so did the ape. In the end, the downfall of the largest primate was not sudden and dramatic, but incremental a tightening climatic trap that reshaped its forests into something unlivable. Teeth and jaws are all that remain silent evidence of a vanished giant. Yet long after its disappearance, the image of a towering ape would refuse to fade, resurfacing in myths and stories that placed massive primates back into the forest of human imagination. If a 200,000-year-old extinction sounds final, why do so many stories insist that the giant still lingers in the shadows today? The fascination with massive primates did not end with paleontology journals. In popular culture, the idea of an outsized ape surfaces again and again. Early in the 20th century, films elevated towering primates into symbols of raw power. At the same time, local traditions across Asia carried centuries-old tales of wild men inhabiting dense forests or mountain valleys. These stories overlapped with accounts from North America, where woods and ridges became the supposed territory of Bigfoot. Into this cultural landscape stepped Gigantopithecus, a real name tied loosely to creatures of imagination. The problem for those hoping to connect myth to reality is the fossil record. Not a single specimen of Gigantopithecus comes from after about 215,000 years ago. No skull fragments, no jaws, not even isolated teeth appear beyond that point. If the animal survived into modern times, caves, sediments or archaeological digs should have produced something. Instead, the record falls silent. And it is precisely this silence that invites competing ideas. Where evidence ends, speculation begins. A vanished giant becomes a candidate for hidden survival, a way to keep mystery alive in the absence of direct proof. University museums and paleoanthropologists point out a simple fact. The known range of Gigantopithecus was in southern China, confined to limestone caves and subtropical forests. That is a long way from Himalayan glaciers or North American pine forests. From an ecological standpoint, transitioning from the bamboo-rich understories of Pleistocene Asia into frigid high-elevation snowfields is implausible. Yet, stories of the Yeti place a shaggy humanoid in those very settings and Bigfoot reports describe a vaguely similar ape-like form thousands of miles from where fossils cluster. 
The disconnect between science and storytelling is sharp, but the stories persist. Popular media often emphasize this contrast directly. Reports by outlets such as CNN and Smithsonian highlight that the extinction of Gigantopithecus aligns with climate-driven forest changes, not with human hunting or secret survival. These articles remind readers that no evidence supports a living relic while stressing that paleoenvironmental shifts explain why the ape could not endure. Even so, the very act of publishing such features shows how readily modern audiences link the fossil to famous cryptids. When people read of a nine-foot ape that once walked Asian forests, the leap to Bigfoot seems natural, even if scientifically unsupported. Legends often outlast the creatures that may have inspired them. Gigantopithecus became extinct while archaic humans still trekked across Asia, and echoes of distant encounters could have filtered into folklore. Over time, what began as oral stories became part of broader mythologies about hidden giants. The key difference is that in folklore, survival is assumed, while in the fossil record, disappearance is definitive. In this way, Bigfoot and the Yeti may be cultural shadows cast by a creature long gone, while science maintains its picture of an ape, brought down not by hunters or mystery, but by ecological change. And from that intersection of myth and fact emerges a bigger question, what does its story reveal about the fate of giants in unstable worlds? Gigantopithecus shows that size alone never ensured survival. This enormous ape could dominate its setting, yet when forests shifted and resources declined, its bulk worked against it. The new multi-proxy work shows G. Blackie went extinct because specialization and a large body size reduced resilience during increased seasonality between 295 and 215,000 years ago, a cautionary analog as today's forests undergo rapid human-driven change. You now know what the best evidence says, not a lost living giant, but a specialist species undone by changing forests. If you found this deep dive useful, consider subscribing for more grounded prehistoric stories and tell us in the comments which mystery fossil you'd like us to examine next.